Let us embark on a molecular exploration where the dance of atoms unveils the poetry of science. Welcome to the enchanting world of chemistry where curiosity is our compass and discovery awaits at every bond. A very good afternoon to one and all present here. Myself, Anaga. And myself, Hasiba. We'll be hosting this event today. It is with immense pleasure and a sense of profound honor that I stand before you today as we gather for the IOE Distinguished Lecture Program. On behalf of all the fraternity of School of Chemistry, University of Hyderabad, I extend a warm and sincere welcome to each one of you. Today, we are privileged to host our honorable speaker, Professor A. Ajay Ghosh, Infosys Prize Laureate and former director of National Institute of Interdisciplinary Science and Technology, Tiruvannandapuram, whose contributions have left an indelible mark on his respective field. As we delve into the upcoming lecture, let us foster an environment of open minds and engaged hearts. Once again, a warm and cordial welcome to each one of you. May I now request all the dignitaries, our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor B.J. Rao, our Honorable Speaker, Professor A. Ajay Ghosh, Dean School of Chemistry, Professor Ashwini Nankia, IOE Director, Professor M. Ganeshyam Krishna, and Professor R. Chandra Shegar to take your seats on the dais. <laughs> Sirs, please. Before we commence with today's event, I would like to take a moment to express our sincere appreciation, just as flowers, bring beauty to the world, their presence here adds warmth and vibrancy to this gathering. Now, I would like to invite Professor Ashwini Nangya, Dean School of Chemistry, to present the bouquet to our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor B.J. Rao, as a token of gratitude. Sir, please. Thank you, sir. Now, I would request our respected Vice Chancellor, Professor B.J. Rao, to present the bouquet to our Honorable Speaker, Professor A. Ajay Ghosh. Thank you, sir. May I call upon Professor Ashni Nangya, Dean School of Chemistry, to speak a few words. Good afternoon, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor B.J. Roy, our esteemed speaker, Professor Ayapan Pillai Ajay Ghosh, Professor Ghansham Krishna, Director IOE, Professor R. Chandrasekhar, who has organized today's distinguished uh, lecture event, faculty colleagues, students who are all here. This is a very important lecture for the School of Chemistry and for the university to have one of the most highly cited and most eminent chemists of this country uh, and I will qualify it only by saying uh, in our generation uh, when I mean those of us who are roughly in the age group of uh, early to mid 60s. Uh, right from the very beginning I have uh, known Ajay Ghosh because we all started our independent career in this country around the same time in the late 80s and early 90s. Uh, in the very beginning it was very clear to all of us uh, that uh, he will lead the area of science which he has chosen and he will be talking to us uh, about uh, solar energy and sustainability which are very important themes. He has been a plenary speaker, a keynote presenter at uh, many of the international conferences uh, where, uh, you know, for the lack of a better word, uh, I will say that uh, all the invited speakers were whites only and he was the only Indian uh, in many conferences I know where I have seen the program uh, he was invited to speak. Uh, it was very rare in the 90s uh, for somebody from India to be uh, representing what science is happening here and uh, Ajay Ghosh was one of them. 
Of course, as times moved on in the 2000s, I think Indian presence is becoming more and more frequent and today it is not surprising at all. Uh, but as they say, at that time uh, it was very, very unusual uh, to have uh, an Indian uh, present in the presenting a keynote uh, or a plenary lecture, including some of them, uh, you know, in the gathering of, uh, of Nobel laureates. He himself is the Infosys laureate, which is, as we know, is the Indian equivalent of the highest award given in the area of sciences. And he has been at uh, what is now the National uh, Institute of Interdisciplinary Science and Technology at uh, Thiruvananthapuram, CSIR. This was originally an RR labs, regional research lab, which became a national level NIIST uh, CSIR laboratory and uh, Professor Ajay Ghosh was uh, in a large measure responsible for this, uh, uh, for this upgradation. This year as we know also coincides with the, the 50th year of uh, the university uh, started in the year 1974. So it is a very, uh, uh, you know, very important day and a very uh, graceful day to have uh, a luminary like Professor Ajay Ghosh uh, deliver a lecture and tell us about his research. I welcome everyone again and we look forward to a stimulating lecture and discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Now, I request Professor M. Ganeshyam Krishna, the director of IOE, to talk a few words about the distinguished lecture. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Professor Vijay Rao, Vice Chancellor, uh, Professor Rajay Ghosh, the distinguished speaker of the day, Professor Nangya, Professor Chandrasekhar, colleagues. Uh, it is indeed uh, an honor for us uh, to have uh, such an eminent person uh, as part of the IOE, which is eminence. Uh, distinguished lecture series uh, and I thank uh, Professor Rajai Ghosh for accepting our invitation and uh, as Professor Nange said it is also a happy coincidence that the Golden Jubilee year of the university and our status as uh, an institution of eminence is coinciding and uh, this allows us to invite many uh, eminent, distinguished academic scholars, not only from within India but across the world. And I, I know that there is a whole series of lectures uh, across all disciplines over this uh, the next 12 months, which are being organized. And uh, I must uh, congratulate Professor Chandrasekhar on uh, the choice. <coughs> I mean, I, I don't have to add to what Professor Nangya said. He, uh, Professor Rajay Ghosh is one of the most uh, distinguished chemists uh, in this country of his generation. And uh, he's done exemplary uh, work, uh, seminal work in, in his area of specialization. The uh, only thing that I would say as part of the institution of eminence and when eminent scholars come, I hope uh, that uh, Professor Rajay Ghosh can spend a few days interacting with the students. I don't know if he has the time, but I would request him to spend. You know, we, we don't get an opportunity to invite you and so we would like to, you know, sort of capture you here for a few days and interact with the students, motivate them, inspire them. Uh, <laughs> who knows? Okay, so that that, <coughs> that invitation is open. So next time could be next week also. <laughs> uh, yeah. Sure. Then. So uh, so with that, I I would just say that IOE. Uh, I mean, we are all part of uh, IOE. Is not a separate sort of uh, institution. It's part of the University of Hyderabad and I think we should celebrate uh, all of it together and 
Um, I'm just a facilitator and I would like to say that the Institution of Eminence program is meant for this kind of thing and I hope the School of Chemistry and rest of the university organize many more such lectures um, and the tenure of the uh, IOE is for another year and I hope um, we all are able to invite uh, many distinguished people to interact with our students and get their benefit. So thank you and all the best and I'm sure uh, the lecture will be uh, spellbinding. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now, I would like to invite our respected Vice Chancellor, Professor B.J. Rao, to deliver an inaugural address. Firstly, a warm welcome to Professor Ajay Ghoshji uh, for uh, coming here in person and uh, sparing his quality time. And I also want to thank uh, Ghansham Garu, Ashwini Nangya Garu and Chandrasekhar Garu for arranging this very important talk, Distinguished Lecture. The title is Classical Photochemists in Energy Saving Smart Windows. It's a very pregnant topic and I completely agree with what uh, Professor Ashwini Nangya said in the very beginning. I would add one more remark to that. In general, the median of excellence among sciences is high in chemistry in the country. Even within that median, people like Professor Ajay Ghosh have made it even a higher benchmark. So they have actually set the standard very, very high by their achievements and their profile, which are globally competitive. Obviously, Infosys Award is a mark of that. And uh, the area of your work is uh, rather um, multidisciplinary. Photochemistry happens in many, many realms, in living world, in non-living world in highly physical world. So I think that is a very uh, exciting uh, area, especially in the context of energy capture. Um, when I refresh my own photochemistry in living systems, I recollect two basic take homes that I feel are very important. One of course is the efficiency. Efficiency of uh, photosynthesis, for example, is high, could be higher, but nature did not go for high efficiency in photosynthesis deliberately because it wants to build in tunability. So efficiency was sacrificed for tunability from single photon to multiple millions of photons are captured. I think that I think is a beautiful window and I am sure uh, I am sure uh, this uh, this tunability part is extremely relevant in what Professor Ajay Ghosh is going to talk about. I have come here to learn photochemistry and efficiency in this seminar. I will sit like a student and learn and I am sure this is going to be a very very exciting topic to hear, learn and imbibe. So I also requested Professor Ajay Ghosh to, s to do a session with students because he has time. His departure is 9.30 or so p.m. So he has time, spend at least an hour so that students can ask him tough questions and get satisfied with uh, very good answers. This is very important. Whenever we have a distinguished visitor to the campus, we must expose the visitor to the students. This is the requirement and uh, this is a mandatory requirement I would insist. And IOE is doing very well uh, in this requirement, so let's keep it up. Thank you very much and let's just sit, by, sit back and enjoy the lecture. Thank you. Thank you, sir. 
Our distinguished speaker requires no elaborate introduction as his remarkable achievements speak volumes. To offer insights for those who may not be acquainted with chemistry background, I am delighted to invite Professor R. Chandrasekhar from School of Chemistry to provide a brief introduction about our esteemed speaker. Thank you, uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor and uh, Dean School of Chemistry and uh, Professor Gansam Krishna IUA Directorate and uh, my esteemed colleagues and students. Uh, I'm here to introduce uh, the speaker, but uh, you all heard already that uh, my job is already half done. Professor Nange has done a uh, wonderful job of uh, introducing the speaker. Uh, but uh, just want, I won't take uh, much time, just want to tell you about uh, Ajay Goh's uh, you all know he's a prominent and, and uh, prolific figure in the field of chemistry, in particularly organic materials. Uh, he's uh, currently honorary professor and uh, holding a J.C. Bosch National Fellowship uh, at uh, NIST Trivandrum. Um, his uh, research interests uh, spans a wide range of areas in, uh, within organic materials, fluorescent materials, photoresponsive materials, and organogels, molecular probes, and covalent organic frameworks. Uh, a very notable uh, contribution uh, is the introduction of a new class of uh, soft material by him uh, known as pi gels. So students please note down, pi gels uh, is the key word introduced by Professor Ajay Ghos group and uh, he is uh, well recognized and uh, it's a long list I have, I can show you, I can't read everything. Uh, you know, he is in the editorial board uh, member, uh, you know, of uh, nearly 15 uh, journals and uh, uh, also, he is very active uh, member of uh, uh, and chairman, advisory board member, board of governors of various committees, government committees, and also uh, private organization. And uh, if you look at his uh, medal list, I, I don't think anything he missed. Okay, uh, so it's completely you know following the order that shows his uh, consistent performance uh, from uh, 1988 uh, onwards when uh, he won uh, Young Scientist Medal. And then the reason one, one is by the Kerala government, uh, Kairali Lifetime Achievement Awards. In addition, you all know Professor uh, uh, Vijay Rao and uh, Professor Nangya told about this uh, Infosys and it's not that uh, easy uh, to get that uh, honor and uh, he has achieved it. Uh, apart from that, he has numerous publications, uh, his H index is uh, 70 plus, he has more than 20,000 uh, citations uh, and uh, 30 patents to his credit. Uh, apart from publishing papers, he also a prolific writer of many books. He has done nearly half a dozen books uh, on optoalternic molecular switches, dyes, soft matter, metallosopromolecular materials for energy applications, uh, sensor te nanotechnology and uh, stimuli responsive supramolecules. Uh, with this uh, introduction, uh, I invite Professor uh, Ajay Ghosh to deliver his uh, much awaited distinguished lecture. Please. Uh, the half, the hall is more than half full, which is very good. Thank you, all the students. Uh, just WhatsApp your friends also who have not come to join. Uh, and after the lecture, as uh, Professor B.J. Rao said and uh, Professor Ajay Ghosh has agreed, uh, we will have a student's uh, Q&A discussion, doubts, queries session, uh, which will maybe last 45 minutes or so, as much as it takes. Yeah. So just, if we can fill up the hall, it will be even more beneficial to the students in the spirit of IOE. Good afternoon to everyone. In fact, uh, honestly speaking, I feel like a Nawab here today. Sitting there, but the the problem was, you know, I became really nervous, especially after uh, Professor Nangya and Professor Rao and uh, uh, Professor Chandrasekhar all talked many things about me. That was more than in enough for me to become nervous. Uh, though I had given many lectures, each lecture is a nervous process for me because, you know. Every lecture is actually a, a self-learning process. We try to learn many things. In the process, many things can happen, you know. So that is what we become nervous most of the times. But uh, I feel really very proud and honored to be here, part of this 
special lecture and I take this opportunity in thanking Professor Chandrasekhar for creating the ambience and also the Vice Chancellor Professor Rao and uh, the Dean Professor Nankia, all of them for inviting me to and it is a, it's a pleasure coming back to University of Hyderabad which is a, an institution having great legacy in higher education, especially um, I'm very familiar with the chemistry department, you know, I had the opportunity to come many times, but now I'm coming after a, a long break, so it is always a good feel for me, especially when I see a lot of my good friends sitting, you know, discussing about our past and future. We had good time from yesterday onwards. Now, uh, when I was asked to give this lecture, I was also told that uh, the audience may be from various departments. So I thought of uh, giving a sort of general lecture so that all of you probably may be able to enjoy to some extent. So I will try to avoid the, all the jargons, uh, you know, to the extent possible. And one more thing, I would like to congratulate the university and all the people here, because you are uh, in the golden year, isn't it, 50 years of your existence. And uh, every institution and every individual have a milestone, you know, in their life. So this is one of the very important milestone for you. And I'm sure that there are many, many, you know, such occasions in between, a lot of things will happen. And I'm sure that the University of Hyderabad will remain as one of the elite classes of institutions in this country in the field of higher education. So now, bringing back all of you to the lecture. So as mentioned this and shown over here, this is the a kind of a general title which I have given for my talk. So to begin with, uh, let me have a very broad frame, which many of you are familiar. There is nothing other than the sustainable development goals, which we have been talking about several years now. And uh, you see there are several goals which are defined over here. And if you look at each of these goals, you know, it is very obvious to all of us that it needs science and technology intervention in some way or other on an interdisciplinary, you know, with an interdisciplinary approach. Uh, and we are talking about the smart cities, smart villages. We are talking about clean water, clean energy. There are so many things where scientists or science is the major key factor. Therefore, the scientific intervention in some way or other is very, very essential for the success of these set goals. So, if you look at the major challenges in science and, uh, you know, in these uh, goals, uh, in terms of uh, science and technology, you know, you can see that there are many domains which need attention, special attention. And many of our institutions, national laboratories were all asked to reorganize, reorient their research uh, in such a way that all those activities will address some of these. For example, clean air, this is something which is very essential for us. Clean water, clean energy, affordable smart housing, affordable efficient health care. So all these things are directly connected to life and uh, sustainability of the whole earth, where we have to have a strong, you know, connection on consumption of energy or whatever it is. There should be less consumption that will facilitate life in the earth. And this is mainly with respect to energy. 
because energy is the one which is the most important thing. And when we talk about energy conservation, sometimes we wonder what is the relevance of chemistry in energy conservation. See, chemistry provides a synthetic tool to make molecules and materials which are essential for many of these applications. Whether it is in, in you know, uh, energy, renewable energy particularly, whether it is in devices which consume less energy, or any kind of new materials, new generation materials, smart materials, even in healthcare, everywhere you, know, you need molecules and materials. And new materials are coming up every day which is taking care of the new requirements of human life. So I'm, I'm going to address, I can't address all these issues in, in, you know, in a given limited time. So I thought of addressing the conservation of energy, uh, particularly addressing smart windows. So naturally the question is what is the relevance of smart windows? And what are smart windows? There are many different types of smart windows which I will, you know, briefly tell you. But why they are so important in terms of energy conservation? For example, you know, air conditioning is a major cause of energy consumption, and that is one which which produces a lot of environmental, you know, damage. The energy usage, especially for heating in in cold countries. And uh, you know ventilation in indoor spaces, air conditioning in you know in tropical region. All these account at least uh, ten percent of the total energy consumption. This is in the case of the United States in the year twenty thousand. I mean twenty twenty. Uh, solar radiation management using advanced smart windows especially in indoor space, is promising as it can theoretically lead to an annual energy saving of more than 1 to 10 to the power of 15 kilojoules in the United States alone. That means 1% of the annual total energy consumption. So now you can imagine the impact on the whole world, the energy being used for heating, air conditioning, ventilation, etc. So that is the relevance of smart windows. So this is the domain where smart windows can play an important role. So these smart windows are of many different types. There are electrochromic windows, photochromic windows, and thermoresponsive windows. Many of you might have seen, we were just mentioning about the new generation aircraft where you have electrochromic windows, you know, which automatically changes the color. They are really very smart windows, but the problem is that they are very expensive. Such windows cannot be used for uh, normal construction purposes, especially in, we talk about smart housing and all. The common people should be able to afford it. So here the option is going for cheaper smart windows and thermoresponsive smart windows are one option for such application. And what is, how does it work? So this is a, an example of a smart window. You can Google it and see what are the different types of smart windows available. So this is a, a simple glass, maybe two glass panes or uh, you know, two glass panels wherein something is filled in. There is nothing else. There is no electronics. There is no other expensive uh, electrolyte or anything. So this, on a warm day, what happens is that the it becomes, you know, uh, like a, a cloudy and become opaque partly. And you know why indoor spaces are getting heated up? It is because of solar radiation, especially when you have glass windows, this is a closed window because it is air conditioned, closed room, there is no windows. 
But now most of the construction, new generation construction in, a, in the house or in, in uh, open, uh, you know, auditorium and all, you have a lot of glass windows wherein the solar radiations will directly come into and you know that in solar radiations, apart from the UV visible, you have the near infrared and infrared and even longer wavelength radiations. And the infrared, near infrared is the one which is facilitating the heating up of the air inside the closed uh, room. So some way or other if you can divert these infrared radiations and stop their entry into the indoor space, you can keep the air inside relatively you know, cool, which will certainly reduce the load of the air condition, which means that you are saving electricity. Okay. So that is what is happening and this is a kind of dynamic system. You don't need any extra energy or anything input. It is a simple dynamic system. When there is a warm day, then it becomes opaque, cloudy and the infrared radiations will be reflected back, allowing the visible light to come inside. It depends, depending upon what kind of materials that you use. Sometimes it can, it can you know, uh, 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 reflect all kinds of radiations out. Sometimes you can partly allow the visible radiations and uh, the IR radiations will go back. And once the temperature becomes cool, that is inside a cool uh, air, then it becomes transparent, fully transparent and it can allow the solar radiations to come in. So that there is a kind of little bit warming inside the so depending upon the, the temperature outside, it can say self-regulation of the you know, temperature inside by partly blocking or allowing the solar radiations to come in. Okay? So this is uh, what you see here, you know. This is a clear window when there is a, a, you know, a temperature uh, low, then you have the clear window. When the temperature is high, you have the you know, cloudy or opaque window. So this is what I was telling. This is what exactly happening here. So on a cold day, all the light can come in and the indoor space will slowly get heated up. So it will maintain a temperature. Whereas on a hot day, this is partly the near infrared uh, radiations will be going out, allowing only the visible radiations coming in. So you can see the solar radiations, you know, this is the solar spectrum here, where you have a lot of, uh, uh, you know, radiations in this area which is responsible for heating inside. And for a normal glass window, this is the kind of spectrum that you have. But when you have a smart window, you can see that most of these radiations will be blocked. So the transmittance will be extremely low. And I, this is how it works. And now, what is the role of chemistry in this? Smart window, in terms of in, in the construction of smart windows, what chemistry can contribute? As I mentioned, the, 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 the simple answer is that chemistry is required for making molecules and molecules are required for making materials. So that is one, uh, chemistry is contributing. Okay, and uh, I, I also told you that there are many different kinds of windows like photochromic, electrochromic and thermochromic. Uh, they, are, they are based on all molecules. But when we talk about thermochromic materials, my, my talk will be focused only on thermochromic systems here. When we talk about thermochromic materials, they are mainly based on polymers. A, a, a typical class of polymers, I'll tell you what, what kind of polymers. And chemistry is required for making and chemistry facilitate their synthesis. Their properties can be tuned by structural modifications. So this is the advantage of chemistry. So you need all the active elements in these kind of devices. For that matter, if you take any modern electronic devices, it, you, you, you will see that they are all based on molecules and materials. You, know, you need many different types of molecules. And when you talk about uh, these uh, thermoresponsive uh, windows or thermoresponsive materials, 
They are mainly based on a special class of unique class of uh, polymers. Uh, they are having a, a, a particular behavior which is called lower critical solution temperature LCST. So certain amphiphilic polymers they are having a hydrophilic moiety and hydrophobic moiety. Okay. And these polymers can undergo some kind of phase change depending upon the ambient temperature. And these phase change will create a difference in their size and shape and that is responsible for scattering of light. And that is how it works in this th thermoresponsive uh, windows. So this is one example for such type of uh, uh, materials. So those who are in physics and other uh, uh, you know disciplines don't worry about the structure and all. It's a type of uh, polymers which any chemist can make in their laboratory and depending upon their requirements and their applications, their interest, they can apply the basic principles of chemistry to, to make and break different kinds of bones and they can put different functionalities to change their properties according to their requirements I mean, that is the beauty of chemistry. You can play around with functionalities which will bring a lot of changes to the system. So this tunability with molecular structure is the, the most important uh, you know, uh, thing about chemistry, especially when you talk about advanced materials. So this is a, a, this is a, you know, a, a class of polymers called polyacrylamide. It's a very, very simple. And uh, you can f change polyacrylamide with the different kinds of functionalities which will significantly change their properties. So here the main chain of the polymer, it's a long you know, molecular polymer chain and that is hydrophobic but it has pendants in different places and these pendants are hydrophilic, they love water, they can form sort of weak hydrogen bond, get solvated in the solution. And because of this property, certain conditions, this polymer dissolve in the solution. In such conditions, solution will become very clear, transparent. But when you change some of the parameters, here it is temperature. So when you change the temperature, for example, you increase the temperature, what happens is that you are giving more energy. So the hydrogen bond, which is a weaker, uh, you know, bonding, will be broken and the water will be expelled from the polymer chain out and it, that will create a hydrophobic environment to minimize the energy the polymer has to change the shape from a linear structure it may go to a globular structure and this globular structure their size may depend upon the molecular weight of the polymer other physical properties of the polymer or the solvent many and the size of that particles globular particles is very very important in scattering of light when you have globular particles you can see that the part, the light which is entering will be you know the different types of scattering Rayleigh scattering the me scattering physics people will understand much more than you know chemists so that is what is happening here so initially there is a polymer which is uh, in a very you know extended kind of uh, phase inside the solution highly solvated with water and when you increase the temperature it becomes globular that will scatter light so in the process this is what happens here okay, you see the transmittance here the percentage transmittance here is the temperature and when the temperature is less you see the solution is clear transparent and slowly increase the temperature you see that the transmittance this is almost 100% transmittance and when it reaches certain you know, critical temperature you can see start decreasing the transmittance that means it is becoming cloudy and it reaches certain critical temperature here and then it becomes completely opaque that means it is transmitting most of the light you have almost uh, uh, zero 
transmittance here. So, this phenomenon is very, very important in making smart windows, especially thermo responsive smart windows. And uh, so, this is the basic, and then this uh, people, you know, immediately, you know, started working in these areas, not only with polymers, even with the small molecules also, you know, when you have uh, the option of doing with small molecules, that is always good. Uh, you know, better than polymers sometimes in many uh, applications. So, these are some of the examples, but uh, I, I will simply skip uh, once again showing a, a, what is the architecture of a, a smart window here. You can, so when you, when you see a, a smart window somewhere, uh, you must realize that there are two simple glass panels which is filled with uh, a solution of the, the kind of polymers that I talked or a similar kind of molecules. Okay. And most likely it will be in a very benign solvent, for example water, which is the ideal one. And the, the, the thickness will be a few millimeters or even less and which is fully sealed. So, there is nothing else, no electronics, nothing. And this window can fit into any building like a normal window. You do not have to do anything. Depending upon the, you know, the temperature outside, for example, in a tropical region like ours, we have to fine tune these properties to fit or to, you know, fit with our uh, atmospheric conditions. What is the temperature outside? How much temperature you want inside like in a, in a hall like this? To get this, you have the option of fine tuning the molecular structure, but that is the chemist's role. You can make, uh, you can put different types of functionalities, choose different polymers and you can optimize, fine tune their, their dynamics so that your regional requirement will be met to the best way possible. And that is the uh, kind of uh, you know, research that you, you may have to do to come with uh, the suitable materials that you may need for your application. Okay. So, if you look at the current literature, you will see a large number of publications and patents and even prototypes which are now coming up for these kind of windows. There are many prototypes available. I am sure that many, many uh, companies which are involved in this have already made the kind of windows which are required for uh, normal applications. These are not sophisticated windows like the electrochromic or photochromic. So, here is one example, you know, with, uh, which was, uh, you know, not too old, you know, it's published in uh, 2019. And this is a kind of polymers again, the uh, polyacrylamide type, but what they have done is they have taken poly, you know, acrylamide uh, with the different types of monomers and made their copolymers to tailor make their structures and control the size of the globular particles which are formed by the effect of temperature. And with that uh, people have sh demonstrated a small prototype which is very, very sensitive to even body temperature. And that is what you see, you know, this is very clear initially, but when you touch with your palm here, you can see that that image is slowly formed over here within few seconds. So, that kind of uh, quick response can be created by tuning the structure of the polymers. Now, I will tell you a story which is from my research group, you know, always we, we love to speak about what is your contribution in this area. I was simply giving you a sort of a background on what is, uh, you know, uh, smart windows, particularly photoresponsive smart windows. So, any one of you are interested, especially those who are working in the field of uh, chemistry and materials, you can see some of those literature and see what are the different types of smart windows available, how they are made, what kind of molecules, what kind of polymers and all. Now, I will I'll, I'll, I'll tell my story, what we have done in this. So, I will tell you a little bit chemistry at this point, you know. So, those who are physicists and all, do not worry too much about the chemistry here. Okay. So, this boy is Satyajit Das. 
He hails from West Bengal. Uh, several years back, maybe I think in 2015 or so, one day I got a phone call from this boy. He introduced, I'm so and so. I would like to come and work with your research group. Then I asked him why you want to come all the way from West Bengal to Trivand from this southernmost corner. Why can't you go to ISES or there are so many very good institutions in the country. I can suggest even some names, you know, uh, Anine Samanda or, <laughs> or you know, uh, uh, Uday Maitra. In fact, I told many names to him. But he said, no, 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 I want to come. And uh, then I asked him, what, why you want to come? I want to work with a Bengali. <laughs> so I said, there are so many Bengalis you know, in all these institutions. You go there. No, no, I want to work with a Bengali who is working outside Bengal. <laughs> and that is why. Then, you know, how, how do you know that I am a Bengali? No, before calling you, I called some of the senior students in your group and asked, and made sure that you are a Bengali. So he asked those students and they were cheating him. <laughs> yes, yes, he come, he is a Bengali. <laughs> but I told him, see, they were cheating you. No, sir, I know, you are trying to cheat me. <laughs> I have decided to come. Then I said, okay, then you come, no problem. So then he came. And, uh, but I, I, I told him that, after coming here, I will not allow you to go back. Yes, uh, yes, agree, agree. So after coming here, you know, next day itself, he realized that I am not a <laughs> Bengali, rather I am a nasty Malayali. <laughs> Who can kill you left and right. So, <laughs> next day this boy came with a, you know, <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of fear and uh, dark face. I said, what happened? No, sir, nothing. <laughs> okay, so you are ready to work? Yeah, I am ready. Okay, let us start. So I, I gave him a problem that is a deal solder type photocycle addition and photochemistry in general. I told him, you go and read this. So those MSc students you know are sitting here, you know the fundamental, some of these photocycle addition reactions, photocyclizations, deal solder, 2 plus 2, 4 plus 4, all. So I told him go and uh, learn this chemistry, so I am not going to explain this chemistry, it's very... And then I specifically mentioned that you should read this chemistry, because this is very interesting. So the chemistry students must look into this. So, this is a 9-phenyl ethenyl undressing. So, you must uh, read this in the context of the simple undressing photochemistry. But when you have a substituent here at the one of the you know, positions here, 9 10 position, this chemistry is much, much complicated. Okay? You can have two pathways in this case. You can have either the 4 plus 4 cycloaddition or the 4 plus 2 cycloaddition. Okay. And even in this, each one, you have the possibility of two isomers here, 4 plus 1. You have the 4 plus 4 sin or 4 plus 4 anti. Similarly, in the other case also, you will get two. So, in principle, you will get a mixture of all these. Okay. So, when you have a reaction like this, then, you know, people think about how best you can control these reactions, whether you can get one isomer out of this, what we should do. So, if you now look at the literature, you will see there are a few, immediately after this, I think a science paper appeared from a group of people from United States and then there are so many people, a series of publications, where they have used many different, you know, approaches to control this reaction. People put it on gold and nanoparticles, on gold surfaces, one, one, one gold surfaces and then they use some restricted medium, like some cavities and all. And they were successful in creating one of the, you know, especially uh, these products, you know, the 4 plus 2 product in excess. So, very, very interesting uh, reaction. 
So then Satyajit came, you know, I gave him this problem. Look at this and see whether we can do something in this. Uh, especially, you know, we had reasonably good expertise in molecular assemblies. That is one of our, uh, uh, you know, uh, main activities in my research group for the past at least two decades. So we know how to you know, synthesize molecules, how to functionalize them, what type of molecules, what you should do to to create, you know, aesthetically appealing different kinds of structures, molecular architectures. So that gives us a lot of confidence in in designing new type of, uh, you know, reactions or using such materials, soft materials, for getting specific uh, reactions as a restricted medium. So I asked this boy, can you use this approach, soft chemistry approach, to make one of these isomers in excess? So this was the problem given to him. And again, you know, just for uh, the students, you know, I, I was telling that we have fairly good understanding of this. And we have a series of uh, papers on this, you know, using these kind of molecular systems. These are on different domains, you know, I'm not explaining any of these things. Some of these are on architectures, different types of architectures. You can see as if here, you know, tapes, you can he see donuts, you can see vesicles, helices, simple, you know, uh, wires, roads. You name anything, we can make it, you know, because we have that kind of an understanding of molecules. And you can then subsequently use them. You can make many hybrid materials. With, you can mix these soft materials with the polymers, uh, nanoparticles, quantum dots. And you can create many different types of you know, materials. And then you can use their uh, you know, uh, optical properties uh, in many different ways. And uh, you, know, you can create stimuli responsive materials, which are responsive to temperature, to electricity, I mean voltage to light. So there are many, many options uh, for, uh, you know, I mean, extending your interest in this area. But now again, coming back to this, so Satyajit has designed a simple molecule like this. His, his idea was to allow these molecules to self-organize and then restrict the photochemistry to some extent. And then look for one of these products. And then this is his initial observation. He made this molecule, he characterized the molecule and then looking at their behavior properties. And he found that the molecule as such forms a soft material, it undergo assembly, form a kind of supramolecular polymeric one dimensional system through the amide hydrogen bond and then it becomes a soft solid, which is gel. You know, the solvent which you use to dissolve the molecule at, after a, a critical you know, concentration will get gel. They are entrapped, the solvent will be entrapped. And uh, you can look at their morphology, there are different types of morphologies. And then interestingly when he irradiated, because it is a, there is a photoresponsive group, when you irradiate that you see that there is a, a phase change now the gel has again gone back to a solution. But it is one way, it is not reversible. Usually these gelation processes are reversible process, but this is a one way process. You can see the morphology has significantly changed from a, a, a tape like morphology, it has gone to like a, some spherical uh, morphology. Okay. So what is happening? Uh, I am skipping so many things in between, you know, because there is no time for me to explain are those things. I am giving you the most uh, you know, uh, uh, interesting things. So if you ask me how the molecule is self-organizing, the most probable way of self-organization is this. this. This molecule can form a, a, a directional one-dimensional hydrogen bond to form a kind of a supramolecular polymeric tape-like structure. And this rigid aromatic moiety will facilitate their interdigitation to such polymers you know, uh, chains can come together and get interdigitated. In the process, you see the chromophore is placed in such a way that one of the anthracene 
can come face to face with this triple bond. That will fix the molecule in such a way that the reaction occurs there, specifically resulting in this kind of 4 plus 2 cycloaddition product in excess of 90 percent. Okay. Now you can isolate this, you can uh, you know, uh, further purify it, characterize it using all available tools. And then you can, so it shows that the HPSC profile of the irradiated solution shows that you have more than 90 percent of this product in excess. So the soft medium of the gel is really helping the chromophore to organize. So that is what you need. You have to fix the chromophore in such a way that one type of reaction happens you know, in excess. So that is what is uh, happening here. So to some extent we were successful in getting this. And then we did a lot of uh, studies with these uh, systems, especially with these photo product. Uh, that is a different story. I am not going to that. I will simply stick on this uh, you know, uh, photochromic system, in the thermochromic system. So this work you know, went in a different direction. So we were trying to make some you know, uh, LEDs and all things which were very interesting. And that is a, it's a completely different thing. I skipped that. But I am again coming back to this molecule system. How the chemist can modify the molecule the way that they want. Some of these are very simple, not very complicated the functional uh, group synthesis or anything, simple, simple chemistry. So one thing what Satyajit did was he, he replaced all these uh, side chains with uh, you know, these kind of oxyethylene chains. It's a very simple reason, you know, you can make it hydrophilic. You can dissolve the molecule in water. And his idea was to look at what happens to the chemistry. When he does the photochemistry in aqueous medium, what will happen? That was the objective. Nothing else, because other molecule was soluble in organic solvents. He did all the reactions in toluene. He got specifically one product. That product was showing some interesting properties. Okay, that is a different thing. When he was doing PhD, he has to, you know, somehow extend his studies. You know, so he did this experiment. The molecule is the same, except that the side chains are different. So what I am trying to underline here, emphasize here is that, you know, you see the chemistry need not be very complex and complicated to get something out of it. You can even apply your simple chemistry. Here is simply changing an aliphatic chain to an, you know, uh, hy you know uh, hydrophilic chain. And then the rest is very interesting. So this is the change that uh, Satyajit observed, he was trying to dissolve the molecule in water to do some photochemistry. He wanted to measure the spectra, absorption, emission and all. He took it in a, that is what a student do, in does in a, uh, take in a cuvette and then dissolve it. So he was trying to dissolve, uh, he used a gun to heat it and immediately he found that instead of uh, getting the solution more clear, it is becoming opaque. And he was clever enough to see that this is LCST. And he rushed to me, he said, sir, this is what is happening. I said, good, continue. So then he started investigating all other properties. So now the work has moved to a different direction. So we have to now go in depth to understand what is LCST behavior, what type of molecules, what can you do with these type of molecules. So it has gone to a completely different directions. Till that time we were not uh, thinking of smart windows or anything. Okay. So the smart window uh, idea started from this point, after seeing this behavior of that molecule. So Satyajit did a series of experiment to further explore the LCST behavior from different angles. So first he did, uh, you know, this Find, he, he was trying to find out what is the effect of concentration on the clouding temperature. He optimized that. Then he looked at the reversibility that is uh, above the uh, LCST temperature, you know, it becomes clear and below the LCST temperature becomes, you know, opaque. So you can see the transmittance difference, but you can repeat any number of times. And here is the hysteresis, you know, when you heat it, you can see that it is going from the 
transparent phase to the opaque phase and when you cool it, it comes back with a difference of 4 to 5 degree, you know, uh, change, hysteresis. Okay. Now, you can do a lot of experiment to find out, uh, to fine tune their, uh, you know, properties. This is again a concentration dependent. You see, uh, you need a 3 millimolar to 5 millimolar to get maximum, you know, uh, transparency or opaque. And then, you know, you have to find out why it is happening. So, you have to do a lot of things, the phase change is occurring, whether the uh, initial morphology is changing into another, uh, you know, globular morphology. So, he has done all the dynamic light scattering to find out whether there is a phase transfer, I mean, uh, change. So, you, you can see here, you know, this is a dynamic uh, light scattering experiment. Initially, you see it is uh, even uh, very, very small particles, less than 10 nanometer in size. But once you increase the temperature, you can see that the particle size is increasing. It is going to even micron size, okay. And so, these micron size particles are responsible for the scattering of light, okay. And the size is very important because uh, the, the wavelength scattering of the wavelength strongly depends upon the size. But as I mentioned, the original idea was what happens for the photochemistry in water, whether you get the same kind of photochemistry. So, he did a, a experiment to find out the photochemistry, but we, he found that uh, unfortunately nothing is happening. When you do this photochemistry in water, there is no photochemistry, the molecules remains more or less the same or the reaction is extremely, extremely sluggish. There is not much conversion, okay. Then he did the experiment again in, in an organic solvent, he took to toluene, he did the same experiment and he was able to get the product. So, in water, aqueous medium is not getting any product and in toluene, he is getting product. So, obviously, the molecular arrangements are different in these two uh, solvent media. So, obviously, in water molecules, the molecule is not self-organizing the way we wanted for this specific photochemistry, whereas in toluene, the molecule is organizing this way, which is facilitating this 4 plus 2 cycloaddition. Okay. And now, what he did was, he did the photochemistry in toluene, he isolated that photo product. He isolated the photo product. Again, he looked at the properties of that photo product. He was very eager to know whether the photo product also has this LCST behavior. Okay. So, when he did the, the, all the repeated all the experiment with this photo product, he found that the photo product is even much better than the starting material in terms of the LCST behavior. Okay. So, this is and it is become you know you will, the, the earlier one was slightly yellowish in color, but the photo product is uh, is almost pure white. Okay. And uh, he also done this uh, experiment to find out the cloud temperature against the concentration and he found that you know the concentration in this case you need very very small concentration compared to the previous. The other one you need in, in, uh, in millimolar, but here you need only in micromolar. So, the photo product has become much more efficient in terms of the LCST behavior. And what is the implication of this which I will tell you after uh, uh, you know a couple of slides. So, probably this is a cartoon which shows the structure this this photo product is a little complicated strained molecule. Okay. We are simply representing by a sim small cartoon which is easy way to represent. And in, in water or little bit of, in presence of little bit of THF, what happens is that, you know, initially the molecule is in, in solution, it is uh, isotropic and with increase in temperature, you know, what happens is that the water molecules comes out and then slowly it forms uh, agglomerate and it forms globular structure, like it's a very small structure. So, this is what is happening. And now, he also did all the experiments, he repeated all the experiments, uh, you know, to find out its optimum, you know, concentration and all and also what happens to the particle size. Yeah. 
what happens to the particle size. Here also you can see that initially the particle size is very, very small. It's 10 nanometer or even less than 10 nanometer. But once you increase the temperature, you can see that the particle size is going up, is going to micron level. And that is responsible for the scattering. And now when you talk about this scattering, you, know, you have to make sure that the scattering is due to spherical particles. So it has to satisfy you know, the correlation data for a spherical particle. So you can see that initially it was not satisfying the correlation. But once you heat it, you go above the LCST temperature, you can see that it is satisfying the spherical particle correlation data, which means that it is spherical in nature. And fluorescence also shows some changes, you know, when you, this is uh, the before the photo irradiation that is the initial molecule, shows some change in the intensity of fluorescence at uh, below the LCSC temperature and above the LCSC temperature, slight increase in, which shows there is some molecular uh, rearrangement happening in this. But for the photo product you see even much stronger difference in their fluorescence. Because initially you can see that this is the a broad emission when compared to this one. But when you increase the temperature above the LCST, there is a shift also, which means that once it goes to the uh, globular structure, the molecular arrangement, the chromophore is also undergoing some kind of uh, you know, change in their arrangement and that is responsible for this. But in this case, these things are not very important. What is more important is that what kind of particles, what are their size, uh, because that is the one which is responsible for the scattering of light and the scattering of light is important for construction of smart windows. So all this story what I said can be brought in in a, in a, a cartoon picture like this. So this is what is happening to the molecule. Okay? Based on all the data, available data, mm -hmm. you can make it very simple like that this is the initial molecule which is photoresponsive and you represent the molecule like this. And when you put it in aqueous conditions, you know, initially it forms small, you know, very, very, very small particles like this. And these particles are undergoing hierarchical self-assembly to form small rod-like structures, cylindrical rod-like structures. And these are extremely small rods. And in solution, that rods cannot scatter light, so it will allow the light to come through the solution, so that the solution will appear clear. But once you keep on increasing the temperature and when it reaches that critical temperature above the LCST, then what happens is that the water molecules get uh, expelled from the surroundings and they come together and form small agglomerate, all these small roads. So these spherical globules what you see are consisted of small you know, rod-like structures and they are bigger in size and they scatter light. And once they start scattering light, it becomes opaque, from clear to opaque. And once you cool down, it will go back. So you can now repeat any number of times. So similarly, for the proto product also the same thing happened, but a different kinds of morphological pattern. Okay. It initially formed very small, ag small aggregates, very, very small, few nanometers. And then once you heat it above the LCST temperature, again the the water molecules get expelled and all these particles will come together to form bigger agglomerates and they can scatter light. So that is what is happening in these two cases. And so now to demonstrate this, you know, this is a small prototype window that is created with this molecule. You can see that initially it is transparent, but once you heat it, you can see that it becomes opaque completely. And then you can, you can do all kinds of experiments to find out what is their repeatability, what is their I mean, uh, reversibility and what is their uh, lifetime uh, temperature. All those things can be uh, evaluated. So here you can see that initially it transmits almost all the solar radiations. But when you increase the temperature, you can see that the transmittance is significantly reducing. And then when it reaches above the LCST, you can see most of the radiations are, are significantly transmitted and you have almost uh, you know, 
less than 10% transmittance of the solar radiation here. And if you look at uh, other traditional, uh, you know, uh, uh, thermo responsive materials, whether inorganic or hydrogel based, you can see that this system is, is slightly superior than most of the known systems in terms of its performance, which means that it has at least some potential to construct commercial smart windows. So then what we did was we created some large area windows and look at their lifetime and uh, their uh, reversible transmitters at different wavelength of the solar spectrum. So what you see here is mainly these are the you know uh, IR range 900, 1271 and 1678. Okay, these are the red, blue and green regions that you see here. And you can see that in all the cases there is significant transmittance. Okay, but the maximum is for this red one that is 900 nanometer wavelength. See most of these are transmitted back and you can do it any number of times here and here is uh, you know with photo irradiation because you know you have to see whether when you expose it to the sunlight whether there is any kind of degradation or anything happening today this is what we were discussing especially in terms of organic molecular systems when we condi continuously expose molecules especially in a device conditions what will happen Normally for organic system that is one of the limitations for all devices, they will not you know, stay for more than a few days because they can get degraded. So that is the why, but this problem was well addressed in terms of organic light emitting diodes. Now you, you can get commercial products, you know, all TVs and all flexible TVs, screens, your mobile phones, everything, which means that organic molecules can stay for years if they are properly organized, especially if you have the packaging without allowing any oxygen to come in, they can stay even with the continuous. But there is a difference, they are not under irradiation, they are, they are exciting, you know, you are applying a potential, you are getting light, so they can stay even more. But when you have system where you have direct sunlight irradiation, for example, any photovoltaics, where you have solar radiations continuously falling, you still have this danger of uh, you know, slow degradation of organic. So that is the limitation for organic systems when compared to the traditional you know, silicon or other uh, inorganic systems. So now one of the way to reduce this, minimize this effect is if you can make sure that your molecules under such exposure of solar radiations you are not damaging the molecules, <coughs> but you are only converting it into something else and that product is also showing the same kind of properties. If such a system can be designed, then in a device that is not going to adversely influence, uh, affect the, the properties that you wanted. So here is one example for that. So that is how I was initially showing the molecule its properties, then photo products, the properties of the photo products and you have noticed that the molecule is showing certain kind of properties, unique property and the photo product is also showing the same property with better efficiency. So suppose you use that kind of a molecule to make a device, what will happen even with continuous radiation, exposure to light. In principle, you are not going to deteriorate the property of your device. The molecule may be changing little bit, but the overall property stays there as the same. And that is what is happening here. And this is uh, what we have projected to the, uh, you know, uh, scientific community that this is what we, we can do here. So here is one video, which uh, I hope it will work. Uh, yeah. So you can see here, so this is uh, transparent to opaque, you, know, you are heating this window here. You can see 
In few seconds, it immediately got opaque. And now, you once you cool it, you can see that the opaque is going to transparent. But that process is there is a delay, a few seconds delay, but still you can see that. But this happens in less than a minute. You know. So now, depending upon the outside temperature, this can dynamically undergo the changes. Depending upon the outside temperature and depending upon the indoor temperature, both will influence. So it can dynamically balance that temperature if you have a large area windows. Okay. So the, the point here is that we have done, we have made the prototype, we have exposed it for several months continuously, at least for 10,000 cycles we have tested. And we have noted that there is no change in the property. And that is more than sufficient. And I'm sure that even it can go for years. And now we have such windows of two and three, more than two, three years old in the lab, which is still giving the same kind of uh, performance. So that is, that is the advantage of having, you, you, once you try to explore some of the properties, like for example, isomerization or a photo conversion, wherein the molecule is not degrading, but converting into something else, which is showing the same kind of property as the parent molecule, then you can keep the device performance intact. But this is not possible in every case. There are many limitations only in certain cases. And this is one of the domain that you can explore these kind of molecules. So moving further, we are now uh, you know, uh, exploring, and this is now uh, published work, and also it is patented. So Satyajit got his second paper in Angavande. The first one was in JAX. So from these molecular systems, he made one JAX and one Angavande, and a few other uh, papers, uh, you know, to complete his thesis. So after uh, he left, another boy from West Bengal, <laughs> but nothing happened. He came straight, you know. He didn't ask me whether I am a Bengali, <laughs> because he may be knowing all the stories. <laughs> he came, and he joined. It's Deepak Patra, very pleasant, uh, good boy. So. And then I gave him again another problem. You, you know, many of you know those who are in the master MSc class, you know Mallory photocyclization. A very famous, very interesting photocyclization. Okay, it's a, it's a photochemical cyclization elimination reaction of diarrheal ethylenes to form phenanthrene through a dihydrophenanthrene intermediate, which is very, very unstable. There are a lot of theoretical studies and all to find out what is happening in between their uh, you know, energy levels, potentials, and all those kind of things. And many different kinds of molecules can be very easily synthesized. It's an, it's actually, it is an oxidative photocyclization. Okay. So those who are interested can go back and see the literature. You just uh, Google Mallory photocyclization, you will get a lot of interesting reactions. So, I'm just, uh, you know, in, I, I will take two more uh, or three more slides to close my lecture. So this is the latest happening in my research group on this, uh, uh, you know, type of research where uh, we are trying to explore Mallory reactions. So this is photo-induced easy isomerization and ring closure reactions. So again, a, a tailor-made molecule with a lot of uh, optimization thinking and all, we synthesized this molecule and we found that it undergo easy isomerization and the, the C isomer can, the E isomer can easily undergo photocyclization in different ways. And these changes in the process and remember all these molecules show LCST behavior. But the main objective here is how you can modulate the LCST properties by using light. So each one of these molecule is different molecule. They have different characteristics. They have different LCST behavior. And you can use light as a tool 
to control this LCSD behavior when you put it in a device. This is the you know uh, idea here, and we are we are almost successful in this. And uh, actually, the the work is now under uh, you know publication. Uh, here, you know, you can see we are now going for large area windows, and so you can easily so this this temperature can be modulated now using this photochemistry. Here also, you must remember that there is no photodegradation or anything; it's only converting into different products, and each of these products are showing properties, except that their uh, LCST temperature can be customized now. This customization is very, very important because the temperature in Kerala is different from the temperature in Hyderabad. So when you are really talking about viable technology solutions for energy conservation in, in, in terms of smart windows, you have to customize it as per the requirement of that region their temperature variation, etc. And this is one of the main activities going on across the globe. How to optimize? Because, you know, across the globe, the Delhi temperature is very different. European temperature is very different. There, how will you use these kind of devices? So you have to have a lot of different kinds of materials showing the same kind of properties, but the different uh, LCSD behavior. In some places, you know, molecule should show LCST behavior at 20 degree. Some places, it should show at 36 degree. So this customization can be done only through chemical intervention. And that is the role of chemist here. And this can be done easily. If you are a good synthetic chemist, if you are a good material scientist, you can always take help from other disciplines you can have an interdisciplinary approach to solve some of these issues. This is what we were trying to demonstrate all these years. The chemistry is so simple. We don't want to take up any complicated chemistry, especially when you are talking about some kind of applications. It will never work. If you can have one step conversion of one molecule into something else, and that molecules can meet your requirements, whatsoever it is. And that is the way that you should address problems from a commercial viewpoint. I'm not claiming that all these will come as commercial product. This may be still far away from reality. But I'm sure that from here onwards, someone else will take up these kind of issues, problems. Maybe some of you sitting in the audience. And that is how technology evolves over a period of time. If you look at any modern device, see, this is one of the human goals. We never satisfy with what things which we have today. We need better things. That is what is happening in mobile revolution and display revolution, in energy conversion. And this is what is driving all of us to go further with chemistry or materials or physics, you know, whatever it is. And that is how we are all earning our bread every day. You know, I'm sure that there will be many, many things to, to follow this. Uh, anyone who are interested in these kind of things, you can be in touch with me or you can just Google. You will get a lot of information. I'm sure that each one of us think in different ways. And that makes the difference. My thinking is very different from some of your, especially the young brains. So, there are plenty of opportunities. Every time we think that, okay, it has come to a saturation. No, it's only a beginning. There are many, many things to get exposed for the new requirements. The requirements of next generation is very different from, we were all talking about these things during our leisure time. So, there are plenty of opportunities. Try to explore and I'm sure that there are many, many interesting things to be get exposed. So uh, this is just, you know, uh, uh, final conclusion of this, what is happening. This is just uh, you know, under submission. Hope it will go through in some place. 
so this all possible with uh, a few young you know researchers in my group is now very small group um, you know i'm like uh, you know i'm super animated a year ago but still maintaining a small group continuing with uh, my activities research and i have lot of time to do research now <laughs> so things are going on and so these so this uh, the two work uh, that i explained here is uh, satyajit has already left my group several years ago he is in somewhere else doing postdoc but uh, deepak is now at the finishing stage of his this is yeah so many interesting stories to tell but of course in many other occasions i may get opportunities to tell those stories but is an ex is i must tell you that all my bengali students are excellent no doubt about it they are all each one are really really very good i got lot of them in my group <coughs> all these guys thought that <coughs> i am a bengali <laughs> that was <laughs> like suresh das also <laughs> uh, like but suresh das and yashoda sir are very common <coughs> suresh das yashoda sir are all very common but ajay ghosh is not that common you know ghosh is there ghosh is there yeah. ajay ghosh that is important Mm, yeah but you know you have to see my name you know there is no gap you know kerala and bengal there is no gap people think there is a typing mistake mm. that's what i also felt yeah oh i was telling that to the, the my earlier days when i go to you know i mean uh, delhi or uh, any place you know all bengali friends will come and start talking in bengali probably <laughs> <laughs> probably uh, you know anindya you must have talked to me in bengali many times <laughs> and i was telling that somebody was saying that when i was talking malayalam he was saying that he is also he is speaking good malayalam also you know? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway it was uh, i was telling that my father he was a, you know not so educated and all, but he thought of national integration on those days 62 years ago you know. okay. so it's time to stop and uh, i'm really i enjoyed i don't know how you take it but it was a, a special honor for me i'm very glad that uh, i could come here and then you know i sincerely thank all of you for joining my lecture thank you very much Uh, there may be some questions so i think i uh, i may stay back or yeah. Yeah. See, this, it is nothing to do with you know this thing see uh in 787 you know boy ah. for example you see the windows yeah yeah see it's like basically smart windows you know you're very transparent right right but you press something it becomes little darker little, yes, yes, yes. and it's under control i yeah. think what is the mechanism you have any idea you know obviously that is electrochemistry you know it is simple electrochemistry yeah that is electrochemistry electrochemistry not not thermo yeah. no 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 it is electrochemistry that is a, that is very expensive because you need electrolyte you need uh, you know electrodes all those kinds of things but, are but the advantage is that you know you can control you can control opacity. but you know that control if you want you can have control here also else if you just put a, a kind of electronic switch here if you can artificially want to heat or cool you can do it no problem so that is possible and then if you want to change the color you can also change the color if you want depending upon the molecular structure I yeah yes so how it is the project is already is already existing in this system so how this system can overcome the So that is photographic glass to be used for correcting. Yeah, that is simple, you know, photo transformation. It's a fast transformation of one state of the molecule to another state of the molecule without degradation. Yeah. So that is that is isomerization mainly. Yes. In you know, but in these glasses probably some inorganic materials are being used, I think. Yeah. So because uh, you know but the lifetime lifetime all things are important. So most of these kind of glasses which are used in uh, you know specs and all they are some uh, you know inorganic Metalox. metal oxides and all that will undergo because stability is very very important but you can you in some systems you have organic molecules doing the same similar kind of things and they are quite stable also because first of all it is entrapped in a glass 
and it do only you know reversible photoisomerization so those things are very very simple they are not as expensive as electrochromic windows but photochromic windows has many other limitations first of all that is also expensive even on small specs you know if you put a electrochromic i mean photochromic thing you know the price difference you can see it's very yeah but here it is as i said you know it is very very simple nothing there you know, you have a, a small dilute milliliter or a microliter solution micromolar not liter micromolar solution of a compound that compound is not a, a poisonous or you know dangerous it's a simple organic molecule and you use water as the medium there just fill it seal it that sealing is the technology actually because sh there should not be any leak there should not be any oxygen going in all, all those things but that is very simple if you can seal perfectly a uh, display modern uh, you can easily seal a, a window small window what kind of sealing is for polymeric material there are many polymeric sealants you know those things are mature technology there there is no worry that is all these uh, people who are making they they know it they are only you know worried about the molecular system that we are first of all it should be cheap you know should be made in kilograms especially when you talk about large area and the cost should be much less should not create any kind of uh, environmental adverse should not be toxic so there are many many things and in addition to that once it really comes into commercial application there are many other external things will come into play which is also very important so you should meet all it is like developing a drug you know it's not that easy i can show you many things to you say that oh this has uh, come to this level it is a potential application this that and all but that is not going to end there that is why you know the technology but all these if you look at the the evolution of all these technologies over a period of time you see eventually the technology will get mature and it will go to the no industry if but it may not happen from me but somebody else will be there to take it over yes sir uh, like you presented about the uh, what you can say and the glass is that uh, modify their properties with respect to temperature is there any uh, what you can say realistic experiment done like in a real uh, atmosphere like uh, actually there are houses and you are actually uh, using uh, your research in uh, and applying that and uh, measuring how much efficient they are working or something like in lab the experiments are okay that uh, you shown us the video and that worked fine but uh, is there any uh, realistic experiment done and if so what is uh, the result of it good question i think uh, you are a businessman eh? <laughs> yeah uh, coming back to your question uh, actually we have uh, uh, made a model house small house okay in uh, outside the lab and then we have placed this window in the house actually that house there are many many things not only window there are many uh, things many iot kind of things fitted there uh even photovoltaics organic photovoltaics and all there we have this window as well and we have uh, measured all the parameters how the temperature inside will be regulated uh with respect to the temperature outside how much solar light can be allowed inside and how much the temperature and how much air conditioning is required how much energy can be saved all these things are under you know experimentation and it can be optimized so at, at, at the moment i think we are uh, uh, working with i think 1 uh, meter 1 to 1 meter kind of windows large windows and uh, so uh, eventually once you know all the parameters are good and if some people are satisfied especially some companies which are working like for example saint gobain and asahi glass and all are interested in this kind of things so once you know 
they set a parameter for you and if you meet all those parameters probably they will go for further you know commercialization so it is in the process now my own curiosity uh, like uh, what is the difference you observe like when you use normal windows and compared to uh, what you use uh, normal window, window you know so for example you replace uh, all this this wall with a normal window <coughs> and uh, you imagine that there is a strong sunlight coming is a, a summer day uh, you know you can see that uh, the inside the, uh, the indoor temperature is at least 3 uh, 4 degree minimum 3 4 degree above than the outside temperature that is because all the radiations are coming in. and whatever uh, you know what all uh, uh, nir ir radiations which are entering into the room will eventually heat up the air okay so that is what you know you must have felt it in a, like uh, the the greenhouse effect in glass you know suppose if you if, for example if your house you have a you know big now these days we construct all houses you know with long window panel and all those kind of because that gives a, a kind of a good look for the house especially when you want to relax outside you know looking at your uh, you know garden or something you need that kind of uh, things but th the problem is that once there is a heavy sunlight light will come inside and uh, the inside temperature will get so you have to open the window then similar things happens when you park your car outside you know on a sunny day park and when you come back after your shopping you look at how much the temperature will be inside you cannot enter maybe close to uh, i don't know 60 70 degree so those kind of uh, situation you need something usually people then you know you open little bit few centimeter open and then go so that there will be some radiation you know i mean uh, uh, what is that air flow reduce the temperature so the idea is this so suppose uh, i can reduce uh, the uh, indoor temperature at least uh, for 2 to 3 degree then you calculate how much uh, electricity you can save in terms of cooling that will be a huge and then you extrapolate it for the whole country where you need uh, you know electricity i mean uh, air conditioning that is how it works you know we sometimes talk about you know wasting water and we think that if i waste one or two or three drops of water what is going to happen nothing that is not that is not true you take three drops across the globe <laughs> how many gallons so energy and water this is the way that uh, we should try to minimize its usage for the next generation for the sustaining life that is why it has become a goal of the the sustainable development you know united nations world where science is the ultimate solution for all those rest is management you know So, uh, in one of your experimental videos, you have shown and you have mentioned a point like uh, time of heating is la required for heating is less than time of for cooling, mm -hmm. and there's a time lag between That's this. That's hysteresis. Yeah. So, is there any method to reduce the time uh, lag? And yeah, it, it depends upon uh, the structure of the molecule. Because in in some cases, you know, because if you if you talk about the assembly of molecule, for assembling. you have to cool it hmm. for assembling the molecule okay and there is a, a time required for that but deassembling you have to heat it yeah and one of these process is faster than the other you see the hysteresis hmm. okay but it depends upon the structure of the molecule so if you think that your hysteresis time lag is 2 for example more than a degree or uh, uh, you know more than uh, you know 5 uh, 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 minutes then you have to fine tune the molecular structure to minimize that and that is possible only with chemistry mm. so that you can optimize that that is not a big issue you can and some molecule will have the same you know forward and backward pathway 
you don't see any hysteresis. There are systems like that. So, then can we synthesize a molecule where uh, this whatever you have shown for the smart window, it can adapt to any weather condition, means high temperatures or extremely high temperatures or extremely one low system. temperature. One system, yeah. one molecule. It may not be. Uh, no, making it a universal it kind of molecule can be designed. It is difficult. One molecule which can satisfy all kinds of atmospheric conditions. You should have different types of systems hmm. suiting for each one. That is a customization. So to that, can we add any uh, certain materials by shedding certain properties of certain materials so that we can achieve this goal? That probably there may be possibility, but I don't know up to what extent you can succeed. Yeah. I mean, that is what uh, you know people are uh, repeatedly doing research on same systems, you know. Hmm. Because sometimes people pick up the same system and try to reinvestigate. That is why we say research. Yeah. So it all depends upon what is that you need, your requirements. And there is many possible ways to solve those issues. That is how every problems are being solved in science and technology. So according to you, what kind of modifications are required to satisfy our needs? Mainly structural modification. Structural modification. Structural modification. So is there any need to add any additional components so as to you can do this? You can add, you know, for example, you can uh, mo uh, you can uh, manipulate the, the melting temperature or freezing temperature by adding something hmm. in the solvent-solute interactions. Yeah. Ah, okay. Colligative properties. Similarly, here also, when you mix with uh, another one, the properties may change significantly. So this happens in many systems. Yes. So you have shown easy isomerization. Mm. Uh, so in the easy, I mean, mostly you have done either in gel state or in the solution phase. Uh, did you try to look at the monomer and then in the crystal structure, uh, did you try to do any easy isomerization? No, unfortunately, these molecules which we have designed doesn't crystallize. Yeah. Because you know, you see, there is a long yeah, hydrocarbon yeah. chains there, you know. So, if you make uh, small molecules without removing all those hydrocarbon chains, and probably it may crystallize. You can study these, you know. but that is not our interest. You know, we are not okay. interested in that. So that is why so the rate of easy isomerization also is playing a critical role in determining the property Definitely. here in these uh, yeah, yeah. materials. Yes, yes. Good evening, sir. Good evening. So, first of all, uh, thank you for an extremely helpful lecture. I have a question which is related to the Satyajit work which you published. Uh, so, you show that there is a, a deals order conversion. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, if in case by any chance if the irradiation, so whatever the irradiation given by the atmosphere, if in case that irradiation will increases, there might be a chances for the retro deals order reaction also. Mm. So that final product will again decompose into the initial two reactants. In that case, that complete window gets damaged. So there might be, uh, did you try any methodologies in that way? I mean by increasing the temperature or something like that. Control. We are uh, not talking about that kind of extreme temperature because I don't think uh, ultimately, for example, in Hyderabad, what is the maximum temperature that you can expect? Uh, sir, in case of if we can use any African Otherwise, countries. you have to think about some fire. Yeah, there might be a chance. <laughs> there everything will go. <laughs> and in Australia, there are, we, we saw, there are a lot of fires are there, no? So, yeah. in Australia and so all. That in that, is that what case, I'm there everything will go when there is a fire. Yeah, you don't know. So, uh, see, uh, in conditions, you know, things may happen in different ways. For example, retro disorder or whatever it is. But we are talking about certain conditions, you know. So, within that conditions, things should work. Yes, sir. Uh, you, you show that there is a toluene you can use as a solvent for uh, one of the conversion or something like that. Right. If in case by any chance, so let us consider we take some exercise. In that case, if we can use a solvent like a DCM or DCA, something which is less boiling, uh, I mean melting point, the boiling point. So, whatever it is, if in case it is a less than 50 year. So, in that case, if we can use that window in our condition, so, there is a most probability chance for uh, reaching the temperature. No, you do not have to change the solvent for that. I, you can control all those properties. For example, the LCST critical temperature can vary with concentration, concentration of the molecule. Okay, once you increase the concentration up to certain level, the LCST will come down. 
up, down, and I have shown that. Okay. So, for example, you can decide uh, what is the temperature range you need in this place. Accordingly, you can optimize the concentration of your active molecule in solution. Not only the concentration, the thickness that you need within the two window, I mean two glass, that also you can optimize because that thickness will also, you know, I mean uh, slightly influence on the uh, LCST temperature. So, by optimizing the thickness of the window and uh, the concentration of the solution, you can play around. There is no need to uh, change the molecule or so uh, those things are possible. This is the fine tuning. Question I have. I mean, as a researcher, no, we, so simple. <laughs> no. Basically, <laughs> when they have a result, something uh, that is fitting to the application, it is always very easy to explain that. But when we want to design something for some specific application, how do you feel the better approach? I mean, what could be a better approach in your uh, like what? Uh, suppose, let's say I am using the same easy isomerization. Uh. Uh, you have used for thermo uh, as a, a thermal okay. or thermochromic okay. for photochromic applications uh -huh. if you want to. Uh -huh. What could be a, a feasible or be, um, what you feel would be a better possible approach? The simple in, in layman's uh, language. So, what you are asking, if I understand correctly, is that you know if you want to use this molecular system for a sustainable use, isn't it? What should be there? simpler approach is that the first of all the molecule should be very sim easily available. You should be able to make, I was mentioning that if a molecule can be made in one step, that is the best way. Or if you can pick something from shelf and use it, that is the easiest way because you do not have to spend money for making any new structures or you know, anything. You just pick something and then show that, that this has something, you know, some new property. Okay. And then it should sustain. For example, if we are talking about a window or some uh, device, minimum 5 years life. If it does not have 5 years life, who is going to buy it? So, that is a and of course, it should meet all environmental uh, you know regulations that is also important. Uh, sir, so my question is, there was thickness also mentioned of the glass. So, does that play a role in this uh, glass? Is that an important factor during the, uh, for the functioning of this uh, glass or uh, is that just a… Uh, which one? Which one? <coughs> there was uh, in the… Thickness of? Thickness of that glass was uh, also uh, mentioned uh, in that experimental yeah, one. Yeah, yes. So, is that an important factor? That is an important factor. So, how does that uh, govern this uh, glass behavior? With respect to, is it a temperature for temperature controlling or? Uh no, glass behavior, what do you mean by the thickness of the glass or ah, the, sir, the thickness, thickness of the space in between the two glasses? So, it was mentioned, there was a, in the slides, it was mentioned that there is a thickness mentioned. Uh -huh. So, what is that thickness? Like the thickness is between the two glasses, the okay. space inside. Okay. That is the one which is going to influence. And much. sir, uh, like uh, this is for, if co for commercial use, we are saying that uh, this constantly changes back and forth between two states like uh, right, yeah. opaque and dead. Yeah. So like if this material has like uh, if it degrades like uh, we are it changes a lot between two temperatures mm -hmm. and we are making it ideally for a city or a place. So then there is a chance that this material degrades. So, for a normal glass that it is not a problem for a normal glass that it degrades by the temperature. So, uh, is that a problem for this glass because certainly. if it degrades… Certainly, certainly. If there is a chance that the molecule degrade, there is no chance for, <laughs> for the molecule to be used commercially. So, there should not be any chance that the molecule is degrading. That I very specifically mentioned that. It should remain, you know. At least five years, that is a minimum time required. But instead of degrading, the molecule is converting into something else with the same kind of properties, then there should not be any problem. That is what I have shown in my presentation. Initially, we have one molecule having a set of parameters, properties, and all, and when it was uh, under exposure of light, it is converting into A to B, 
and B is also showing the same kind of properties or even better property, then you need not worry about the device. The device will continue to perform so long as this is happening. Okay. And maximum thing it, it can go forward to some extent and then it can also come back to the initial one. If this back and forth is not going to influence upon the life of the problem comes if one of the molecule is slowly slowly degrading into another one C which is not having any properties like the initial molecules. In that case the performance will slowly deteriorate and that is not good. Uh, sir, uh, in uh, in our case, like you explained, this uh, transition is happening at a higher temperature, uh, and it is like um, uh, reflecting the radiation, and we are we don't have to use too much energy to uh, cool our rooms. So, have you come across materials which are used in the other way? Like, if we go to uh, very frigid regions, we would want our system to remain warmer than the outside one. So, are there such uh, responsive materials? in which work in the colder uh, conditions to uh, uh, maintain the insulation. That means uh, you want the room to be get heated up. Or at least remain at an ambient temperature from like assuming if it is very cold outside like 0 degrees or less we would probably want it to be maybe 15 or 20 degrees inside. Okay, maybe the gap I am saying is too much but relatively warmer than what is outside. Yeah, in that case you know what you need is you you need plain windows where you know sunlight if there is sunlight but the temperature is may, may be very cold but still you have bright sunlight that radiation can come and uh, slowly the uh, inside uh, closed rooms can be getting you know heated up but there is a limit for that mm. maybe maximum uh, 2 3 or 4 degree heating and rest of the things you have to have artificial heating ah, yes. yeah yes. but this savings in 2 3 degree is a big saving mm, yes so that is what is uh, you know uh, required. Automatic curtains. Automatic curtains. Uh, I don't know that uh, I haven't seen such windows, but I am sure there may be something. Yeah. But those things are uh, heated, heating using some heating element. You know, you are applying energy. Sensor like temperature sensor. But temperature sensor can only sense the temperature. Yeah, then he cannot produce the heat or he cannot cool the temperature, isn't it? Like when temperature is more, the, it uh, curtains uh, automatically can like uh, cover the window, full window. I mean, those things are only kind of uh, you know mechanical kind yeah. of things. You know, you have a, a, a sensor. Uh, when the temperature outside is uh, you know that uh, it is like you are going and uh, when you have too much of sunlight you are going and uh, pulling it and closing it instead of you doing it you have a some sensor and do it automatically but what is the difference there there is nothing it is like you are putting a window and then you are putting a curtain when there is a sunlight you put the curtain but that is not going to solve the problem you are only blocking the light and the room can still get heated up heated. because the window is still glass transparent. Yes. It can come, the light can come and hit on the curtain. The curtain will get heated up, isn't it? Maybe the intensity may be slightly less. Yes. Yeah. Sir, uh, January 9, 2024, uh, LG has actually uh, given up, I mean, came up with the TV, uh, which is actually transparent. January 9. Uh, 2024 sir. Oh, you remember that day? Yes sir, like um, I, I got interested in that, how that thing worked. Like it was, uh, I mean I sh uh, have seen a YouTube short huh. and uh, that uh, in that thing, uh, excess, I mean in, uh, as like in normal OLED TV, the exactly the, f uh, the uh, pictures, everything is uh, exactly the same, but the TV is transparent. Uh, we can see uh, what we are having like on the other side of the TV, we yeah. can see through yeah, the yeah. TV. It is a glass. 
Sleep. Yes, sir. Uh, so, sir, uh, when I read about this, it's um, I didn't understand much, but uh, it uh, talks about like its electrical impulses is actually passed to the conductive layer and uh, stuff like that. So, uh, sir, uh, what my question is, uh, our own work, like uh, as sir mentioned, our work uh, can be implicated on such kind of uh, systems that if you want to uh, make the TV opaque, uh, we can do, uh, I mean, like that, no, sir. It is. It is not simple, you know, because when you talk about a TV, there are so many electronic components mm, which yes, are required, you know. And in such a system, you cannot uh, put these kind of things. Which uh, there may be some other way of doing that. Yes, sir. Not with these kind of things. These kind of things are applicable only to simple systems, like mm. you know, because there are no electronics, nothing. There is no complication. But a TV has so many components, electronic components, and so many things where you cannot apply. But there may be many other ways of making it yes, opaque sir. and transparent. Yes, sir. As, as well as, sir, uh, like, sir, you have mentioned about, like, where it's going from opaque to transparent at the almost 33 degree temperature and uh, at the equilibrium shift to backside at uh, some 29 something, sir. And, uh, sir, if you want to, like, if the temperature of the, like, uh, of our surrounding is, like, far beyond 15 and if you want to make the uh, system opaque, uh, not just, uh, I mean, transparent. Uh, can we have some, uh, I mean, heat in, I mean, uh, heat generating systems on the. You glass? can, you can uh, put some heating element or something yes, where uh, you can manually heat. Ah, yes, sir. Whenever you want, that is possible. You can just put uh, like any, any. Yeah. There are many windows where you know our car windows are heating ah, yes, sir, yes, sir. during the you know cold yes, uh, temperature. Ah, yes. That those things are uh, you know I mean uh, possible. Yes, sir. It depends upon what is your requirement. You can do all those kind of things. So, sir, what will be the cost of production f uh, for? Uh, oh, that that I don't know. I have never worked out any of those things at this point of time. Uh, yes, no idea. Thanks. Uh, so, first of all, thank you for the such a great lecture. Uh, actually, there are three questions that came into my mind while I was watching the lecture. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, uh, so uh, as per I uh, saw from the slides, when there is a temperature difference, suppose when it gets higher uh, the transparency of the glass like it goes to opaque after that what if sometimes intentionally we don't want it like we have some ceremony in our home and we want natural light to come in is there any modification for that i mean uh, that is what you know if you if you want to have deliberately if you want to manipulate you can put some additional components wherein you know you can deliberately you know alter the temperature so that you know suppose you don't want the opaque window at this point of time you apply this small you know potential or something and vary the temperature so that it remains as transparent but won't it like uh, you know react with the substrate or the gel lever it is composed with in between the glass sheets that is there is no problem there is no problem if you don't want something automatically happen then you can have uh, some manual control on that by which you can you can control this for example, the temperature uh, outside is very low and the glass is transparent because if ten temperature outside then the glass will become transparent. But actually you do not want. So then what you can do is either as he said put a curtain, <laughs> put a curtain so that is it. Otherwise you can have a heating element with a temperature you know uh, what is that uh, uh, regulator and you manually heat it. So, the temperature will slowly increase on the glass and then it becomes transparent. So, you won't see outside. So, your privacy can be kept. And also, uh, as a future scope, suppose uh, the normal glass. So, uh, like what is the durability of the glass sheets that you were uh, like durable. referring to? Yeah. A durable glass sheet, no problem. You know, it can stay, you know, like your windows in the house can stay uh, problem comes only with what is inside so the gel is not uh, affecting any way you know you have a thousand uh, ten thousand twenty five thousand cycles nothing is happening and three year four year windows are still there without any problem so it should remain thank you sir and my last question is uh, like we are spreading the gel or like putting the gel inside the thin films so the thing is uh, apparently it has to be very uh, full right so that there is no gap in between or the gravity should not be there should not be any air bubble or anything. And how, uh, like you are not uh, obviously manually not doing it? No, there is possibility, I mean, there is a way of doing it, you know, filling such things even without any, that is what is packaging. That technology is uh, very matured. 
so people even very thin you know, without any any bubble or air inside you know people can feel those things are possible thank you sir thank you sir for the wonderful talk uh, sir as you have said that uh, the at the temperature higher than the lcst so the responsive material is getting like forming the agglomerates and those are responsible for the scattering of the ir radiation right. so my question is how do you control the size of the particles because the size i i what i feel is the size of the particle is really important uh, because that would like regulate the extent of the ir radiation scattering so controlling the concentration if you control the concentration of your active molecule inside that is uh, you know because the lcsc temperature you have seen that lcsc temperature is varying with the concentration why it is vary because of this okay, so, so the particle size depends upon the concentration of the solution also so if you want uh, smaller particles you reduce the concentration if you want larger particles increase the concentration of the compound little bit more those things you can optimize and whatever your experimental output is is it like uh giving the 100% ir scattering like the extent of the ir scattering it's not 100% but you have seen that graph you know most of this is more than 90% <coughs> is scattered you know the transmittance is is, is like uh, less than 10% okay. from 100% we can reduce to 10% that is enough that is enough thank you sir i have a question sir In this case, you know, four plus four will not happen. You cannot because this can be only four plus two. Four plus four, if you want, you have to place the, the two unresin moiety face to face. Two unresin moiety face to face. Then only you can have four plus four. What we are doing is we are forcefully placing the molecules like this, unresin and the triple bond face to face. So four plus two. If you want to have four plus four, then push the molecule. This unresin, let them look each other and talk each other. That is, uh, there are many different ways, you know, to do that. But uh, people have used some solid surface to fix the molecule. For example, gold surface. They put it on gold surface, though the molecule stand like this. And they can also vary the distance, and they can control. But in this case, we wanted four plus two. We don't know. We haven't made that. So we we have we have to make four plus four and see whether that is showing any kind of uh, you know LCST properties and all. Dear students and faculties. Please join me ex in expressing our sincere gratitude to Professor A. Ajaya Ghosh for an enlightening and thought-provoking lecture. Your expertise and insights have enriched our understanding, and we are truly thankful for the knowledge you have shared with us today. Let's extend a warm round of applause to the Professor. Thank you. May I request our Dean Professor Ashwini Nangya, Dean School of Chemistry, to felicitate our esteemed speaker, Professor A. Ajay Ghosh, with a shawl as a gesture of warmth and gratitude. Please, sir. For a very enlightening lecture and many more glorious Thank you, sir. To commemorate this auspicious lecture event and carry forward the memory associated with this, we would like to present a memento to our beloved speaker of the day. Why don't you come? As a small token of our immense respect, I would like to invite Professor R. Chandra Shager to present a memento, a symbolic representation of the lasting impact your wisdom has left on the minds. Thank you, sir.